Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A special ceremony is held to honor fallen service members. Also tonight, the CNMI is one step closer to getting millions of dollars out to those unemployed. And new funding is leading to a new campus for one school, school here in the CNMI. In sports, his roots are deep in Saipan, but he branches out to the other side of the Pacific Ocean. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Thank you for being here with us. For finding ways to keep things happening. For making things feel a lot better. Thank you. Energize, realize, feels so good just to be alive. Time's a gift, my time is free. I can spend it on you, you can spend it on me. I can say you'll be blown away, but the change you see, you see me. And I feel alright, dance alright, put a little flavor in my life. Thank you for staying strong with us. And for us. Thank you for always connecting. For keeping us together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us that despite this distance, we are still better together. Dokomo Pacific, better together. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, installed the Docomo whole home Wi-Fi, what did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects, and I don't have to get out of my car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. Um, my favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag. Like before, it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes, and I have to hang up and then call her back, and now I don't do that. You know what's a good thing too, is that when you come over to visit, I can give you your own password. I can assign a time limit, so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour, so that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. Alpha Day, Turuwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, May 25th, 2020. The CNMI celebrates Memorial Day a bit different from the years before, but still giving respect to our island's greatest heroes. Here's a sights and sounds by KSPN's photojournalist, Delbert Camacho. to those that have been laid here and their spouses. And never to forget what uh, our family and our spouses also give as their sacrifice uh, to, for us to accept, uh, to, to receive our, the freedom that we enjoy today um, and to appreciate our own forces. Amid the COVID-19, you know, and, and the circumstances, we still have to move forward with something to honor and to acknowledge the sacrifices our loved ones have, have made.
this is the one day of the year that everybody celebrates the lot, the sacrifice that these people made for service members. So it doesn't go away because of a pandemic or anything. We still honor it. As a veteran and a combat vet, uh, I know how it is uh, out there in the combat field. Uh, a lot of my buddies are older that have uh, passed on. Uh, and this is the day that we honor them for sacrificing their life for our freedom. And we really appreciate that. And I would just say uh, our prayers to them, so as the family that are still grieving. We pay gratitude to the families of our fall, uh, fallen braves because they too sacrificed while their spouses or their family are serving in the armed forces for the protection of our liberty and freedom which we enjoy today, tomorrow and in the future. I did serve the army for six years. My wife is buried here and we came to visit and very glad that it's the least we can do is lay the, uh, the wreath and you know and do a little bit of uh, very little but at least we can do because of our situation nowadays. The CNMI is one step closer to getting millions of dollars into the hands of those whose jobs were impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The U.S. Department of Labor has approved the CNMI's implementation plan for the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance and the Federal Pandemic Unemployment Compensation Programs. So we got a $70 million approved uh, by POA and uh, by hopefully by this week. Um, and early next week we should have the application and hopefully um, be able to start um, having our unemployment uh, receive uh, those fundings. Governor Torres says this is a big step in stimulating the economy. When you look at all, I mean, even in the United States, there's, I believe, more than 30 million unemployed. Um, here in the Santa Mai, we're almost reaching 7,000. Um, these funds um, would definitely help not just the family, but for sure the economy to have new money come in. Uh, as you know, um, our revenue here is tourism. Uh, we don't have that now, but with our federal partners and giving us the revenue that will be rolling in, that is new money that will stimulate the economy here. For the most up-to-date information on the PUA and FPUC programs, visit marianaslabor.net. The Northern Marianas College receives federal money to help in the completion of their new campus. The Northern Marianas College has served striving students in the CNMI since 1976. Interim President Frankie Elliptico says the college is currently undergoing a makeover to better accommodate its students. So what we're trying to do um, in any kind of reconstruction is always secure the funds first. So we've been working hard at that. So we got the notice of award from the U.S. Department of Education with regard to $21.9 million. So for us, that's available already. Um, so what we want to do is take, uh, uh, start using the funds to demolish some of the, the structures. Elliptical says, since there are no students on campus, this is the perfect time for the demolishing process. We're also at, uh, working on securing funds from the Economic Development uh, Administration, ADA, and we have uh, some positive developments there. So there's two big grants there, the Economic, uh, and the Workforce Development Center, that's one building, and then the Crees uh, uh, building. So we're working on securing their final approv approval for those two buildings. Again, no formal approval has been uh, provided for those two grants. NMC is also included in the Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Funds, but still awaits the final state plan. 
We're also seeking um, other funding sources for smaller types of constructions. NMC Crease already secured, um, you probably saw in the newspaper or in the media about a um, pineapple grant. So, and a taro grant, we have a, another one, it's a taro grant. So those grants, not, it's not just for the research, but it's also for facilities. So we'll be able to construct and uh, embed a uh, science lab in those buildings along with those. NMC also recently received the full amount of the Governor's Emergency Education Relief Fund, which also goes to the construction of the upgraded campus. College is turning 40 next year, right, in a year. is that We're celebrating our 40th year anniversary, so we want to make certain that we there's a lot of uh, tra uh, movement and progress and um, a lot of things to report between now and our 40 and our, our groundbreaking. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Lemis. A new law that could save your life and those around you is being strictly enforced by DPS officers. That's the sound you'll hear if you're caught using a cell phone while driving. The Department of Public Safety is cracking down on Public Law 21-17 to restrict the use of mobile electronic devices while driving vehicles. The law came out that now it restricts everybody. Uh, the, the use of electronic device, electronic device when we say it's uh, called cell phones, tablets, uh, laptops, anything that, that uh, you receive any wireless uh, communication or data, data communication, cellular, uh, it prohibit, the law prohibits for a person who is actually in the physical control of the vehicle uh, to not be in, in, in possession of this while they're actually behind the wheel. It's a law that was passed back in March of this year, but many may not know much about. This new law, it's a primary law. That means if I don't need to find other violations to stop you. Once, I, once we, we observe the, the operators were behind the wheel, fiscal control with an with a electronic device on their, on their ear or in their hands, it's a primary law. We can stop them. Using a cell phone while driving can lead to deadly consequences, and Quan says this law is to prevent just that. We keep crash data uh, for the past like five years. We range cinema like or you know, cinema like uh, recorded approximately like between 2,000 to 2,500 crashes and 200 some. So basically, like 10 percent of the crashes were caused actually caused by uh, electronically distracted. The law includes fines and penalties to those who choose not to abide. The regular drivers, uh, they'll go from $300 up to $500 uh, subsequent after, after the first violation. For taxi and bus drivers, the first offense is $750 and then subsequently $1,000. Quan and Macaronis state if the call or text is important enough to answer at that moment, just pull over. It only takes seconds for a deadly mistake to happen. I just want like the public to be aware that when they're driving a motor vehicle, uh, you know, like the vehicle weighs, you know, they don't weigh like a couple of pounds or so. It weighs like thousands of pounds. Uh, 4,000, 6,000 pound object, they're actually in physical control, they're operating. That one split second that they take their eyes off, trying to look, read a text, incoming text or so, that one split second they take their eyes off, anything could have happened. A car could have pulled out of an intersection, uh, a pedestrian could have you know, entered the highway to cross the road, and that one split second they take their eyes off, they could, you know, it could be deadly, they could, you know, uh, seriously injure somebody or kill somebody. Think safety. Uh, whatever you do, you're, you're, you're responsible with that vehicle. You're responsible as an operator. So that means whatever, thing you, whatever you do in that vehicle, you're responsible regardless, regardless it's not your fault or it's your, or, or it's your fault. What matter is that you have to be more, more, more safety-minded uh, operator and uh, make sure that you, uh, that you keep that phone. If it's not important to respond to texts, to any, any messages or any phone, then just leave it as it is and then answer when you come to your destination. Or if it's urgent, like I said, you pull over to the side of the road and, and answer, the, answer the call safely. Coming up, agencies stay committed to providing help and support for families who aren't safe in their own homes. More after the break.
Mom, are you sure? What about the shutters? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I had to light up all the candles. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Winigi PHI Pharmacy in Gofadahi, Ihinim Lomu. Our complete line of pharmaceuticals and lowest prices ensure you get the treatment that you deserve. Our compassionate, friendly, multilingual staff will take the time to get to know you, explain your medications to you, and answer any questions that you may have. Nere eyor sumaye ukalweres ren, kuchu weyor safeye emwal ebalisiu klalyamweres. Inumin ng inyong gamot, ayon sa nereseta ng inyong doktor, at alin sunod sa bili ng inyong pharmaceutical. We accept most insurance, but in case you don't have coverage, we offer cost-effective generic drugs. PHI Pharmacy, your lifelong partner in health. PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Mom, are you sure? What about the shutters? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I had to light up all the candles. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The Saipan Mayor's Office continues to work hard in protecting animals and providing treatment when they can. Mayor David Apatain gives an update on the animal shelter here on Saipan. Right now, uh, you know, that shelter's been an ongoing thing, uh, the animal shelter. Uh, that is from uh, Typhoon Sodler. We have funding from FEMA. We have local funding for that to, to add on to, to uh, the shelter. But uh, we went to uh, almost two years trying to secure uh, environmental assessment from FEMA. And then uh, after that, we have to wait for the Corps of Engineer again to give us an approval, you know, on uh, uh, the permitting process. So right now, I think uh, we're seeing the light finally. Uh, we're getting something back from Corps of Engineer and hopefully we can uh, start something this year. Lockdowns may keep people safe from contracting the virus, but not from abuse happening in the home. KSPN's Sally Lemus sits down with some individuals who tells us what everyone can do to help. Stay-home orders intended to stop the spread of the coronavirus may be making domestic violence more silent than it already is. Maisie Tenorio, who heads the Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence in the CNMI, says domestic violence is all about power and control. When, you know, um, governments implement things like social distancing, which is what's happening during this pandemic, um, it can increase isolation for victims um, and also increase the power that um, the abusers have over the victims because as you can imagine, monitoring and other things like that um, uh, intensify. Tenorio says domestic violence is an extremely underreported crime and during a lockdown, quarantine and strictly enforced social distancing, victims may not have the access to reach out for help. Victims um, find it very difficult and challenging to reach out for help, um, but even more so now during this pandemic, um, they may not even be physically able to leave their homes um, if abusers are, um, you know, to use your word, trapping them inside. They may not have access to a phone. They just may be monitored 24-7. So reaching out for help, um, they just may not be able to, and, and it can actually be, be very dangerous for victims to make the attempts to call or to leave. Um, so to keep themselves safe, they just don't use the phone or they don't leave the house. Um, so the danger factor increases during a time like this and the access to services for victims of domestic violence decreases. Chief Prosecutor John Bradley says it is important for the community to watch out for these situations. To watch out for these situations 
And we, we often see things and wonder whether we should tell someone. And this is an area where you really should, even when you have doubts. Uh, because that phone call can help uh, initiate contact uh, from an agency that can provide resources and counseling. And while it might not end the abuse that particular instance, uh, it will begin uh, a series of records so that the next time police have a better idea of what they're responding to. As a prosecutor, one of the first things that I look to when I get a case is the history because it tells me a lot about what efforts have been made and uh, how dangerous this situation uh, is. With schools also shut down, there can be undetected cases of child abuse in the homes, which is a big concern. I want to make sure that the public, uh, whether it's a neighbor or uh, an outside member of the family visiting, is just keeping uh, a careful eye on children. You know, look for bruising, look for uh, crying and excessive uh, concern over their safety. Um, if a child looks like they want to talk about something, you know, give them a safe uh, environment to do so. Uh, the wonderful thing about uh, how we have developed protection of children that I've seen here in CNMI is we now have the ability to take a child outside of the home and take them to uh, DYS where they can be interviewed safely in a comfortable room by uh, what we call a forensic interviewer, someone who is actually trained to understand how to talk to children and to gather information and to record it so that that child does not have to repeat what they say. Many community members have expressed themselves questioning their own instincts or even misinterpreting the situation without knowing the whole story. You know, I've talked to so many community members who, you know, want to make the call, but they're nervous about it, uh, whether they're doing the right thing or not. Um, and if you're unsure, um, especially in reference to a child, um, call DYS, you know, and say, you know, this is what I've seen in my neighbor. You don't have to give your name. Um, you don't have to say, like, this is my neighbor. You can just say, you know, I I'm a concerned neighbor or family member, what I'm seeing. With this, does this rise to the level of making a report? Um, and DYS, you know, the Division of Youth Services has emphasized that they are available. They have people on call 24-7. If you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence or child abuse, please reach out. Despite the economic struggle, there are still lots of help available. Reaching out will only result in the safety of our children and in the improvement of families. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Lemis. Thank you, Sally. All right, coming up, hope you get a kick out of this homegrown story in the Sports Report next. Thank you for being here with us. For finding ways to keep things happening. For making things feel a lot better. Thank you. Energize, realize, feel so good just to be alive. Time's a gift, my time is free. I can spend it on you, you can spend it on me. I can say you'll be blown away by the change you see, you see. Thank you for staying strong with us. And for us. Thank you for always connecting. For keeping us together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us. That despite this distance. We are still better together. Don't come up with something. Better together. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They are an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, 
install the Docomo Home on Wi-Fi. What did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects, and I don't have to get out on the car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. Um, my favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag like before it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes and I have to hang up and then call her back and now I don't have to do that. You know what's a good thing too is that when you come over to visit, I could give you your own password. I can assign a time limit so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour so that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. Buenos sports fans. Buena sports fans, from none to several, the NMI is providing a small pipeline to college soccer in the States. Tonight, an interview with one of the recent successes. One player who rose through the ranks of the NMI Football Association's developmental program is Sunjun Tenorio. He was Rookie of the Year at Suffolk University in Boston last year, and now he's moving up a level this fall. I, I just finished Suffolk University, uh, playing at Suffolk University and I'm transferring to Warner Pacific in Oregon. It's a NAIA school and so yeah my fall plans I'm going, to, going there to continue my soccer and school. Uh, it's I mean higher level and so that's my goal. I just want to keep getting better and moving up in level. This coming after a brilliant freshman year when he led his team in scoring and he wasn't surprised. Uh, not really. I think we had a lot of experience like here playing in the national team and it's something that we like shouldn't take for granted and I, I like like again I had a lot of experience playing here, playing off island with the national team and so yeah, not really, not surprised. Tenorio was the first player from an NMI national youth team to score in an international contest which came in Laos against the Philippines in 2015. He calls his goal while playing on the men's national team two years ago his proudest moment. He used a swim move to beat three Macau defenders. Uh, maybe my first men's goal against Macau was when we drew 1-1. Uh, that was just... Yeah, that was probably my proudest moment just because of like, you know, getting a point drawing and then also just my first goal. And that was also my first men's tournament, so. Tenorio says his goal is just to become a better soccer player. In the meantime, he's got a major, but yeah, it could change. Uh, I'm, I'm a, in the business school right now. I'm doing business management, but I'm, I'm considering moving to like sports management, something, sports marketing, something like that. Yeah. During the lockdown, Tenorio's been working out along with a few of the nationals. Uh, just trying to stay fit. Um, we, we have some individual trainings here. We're allowed to train here, so I do that. But if I'm home, I, I have a little home gym, so I do that, try to stay fit. Uh, so we, we come and just like five of us and train. We, of course, we try to keep our social distancing and stuff like that, but just anything we can really just to stay fit. And Because, I mean, after all this is done, we might have a tournament, so just staying ready for that. Sun June has made the KSBN2 top plays of the week eight times. Growing up, he excelled in baseball, basketball, volleyball, but eventually stuck with soccer due to time constraints. Yeah, it was, I mean, when I was like 10 to 12, I also really liked baseball a lot. And it was really just, once I got to like the national team, it was really just to decide and pick one because of like it was very time consuming. And so then I just picked soccer. But yeah, I mean, baseball was Maybe even like before soccer, I liked baseball a lot more. Sun June encourages you to take advantage of the excellent NMI soccer training program here. Um, you know, appreciate it and really take advantage of it because we have high level coaches, like some of the highest level, and just take advantage of it. Sun June credits those who have been most responsible for his achievements on the field so far. Definitely, of course, like my parents, but uh, at Coach Mita. Coach Jersh, Coach Norman, I mean, they give us a lot of opportunities that, again, we shouldn't take for granted, and so, yeah, them. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. 
I don't believe what I just saw! Today's high, 92. Yep, that's the highest of 2020. The low, 79. Our heat index, also the highest of 2020, was 105. Humidity, thankfully, only 59%. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, isolated showers, east winds 10 to 15, high 90, low 80, seas 3 to 5 feet out there. Sunrise, 546, high tide at 845 in the morning, a low tide 417, sunset at 642. That is your news, sports, and weather on this Memorial Day here in the Northern Marianas. Have a good one, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday evening.